I didn't have my mic on. One second, guys. All right, there we go. What's up, stream? Part three of our engineering stream. We are making a charging phone stand. So at the end of last stream, we ended up working on... Yo, what's up, friggin'? Good to see you, man. Last stream, we worked on the stand part of this. And I'll show you that. We actually 3D printed it out. I started the print when I was uh, getting off stream. And we 3D printed specifically uh, this part here and also this hinge piece here. And I'll show you how that turned out. It, it actually turned out great. Um, So here's how the 3D printed parts turned out. So I'll zoom in on that a little more so you can just kind of see both at the same time. So we have our stand here. And that 3D printed absolutely beautifully. Uh, came out, you know, perfect. And we have this hinge as well. And that just fits into here uh, just like a GoPro mount basically. And that's going to be the mount for our little uh, phone charging dude. Now, at the end of the last stream, I did screw up because I didn't make the height correct. So I have a tall stand now, but that's not going to be a screw up. That's going to be a feature. <laughs> um, that way, people are going to have two options to print off once I release the design. A short one and a tall one based on their preference. And so that just is a hinge and a stand that holds our phone charging dude we got our phone here and if I turn that off here's our wireless charging pad that fits into it I should probably switch back to this view we got our wireless charging pad here and if I turn that off we've got our phone charging stand dude and he pivots like this so you can set him at whatever angle you want you can put him by your nightstand or on your desk or whatever you can angle it at the right angle if you're watching something and your phone will stay charged so you can even watch a movie or something um, so the next steps yeah 3d printing is pretty sturdy if you build your part right I mean I really haven't had stuff snap that often and if it is I know how to fix it yeah 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 exactly and it could be a mini tripod for videos too you could actually flip it around and use, well, you could use either the front facing cam or uh, the rear facing cam if you just switch, flip it around. But yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, this is pretty sturdy. I mean, I can put a decent amount of force on this and it's not going to break. Um, but that's because I made it thick enough. Um, this is made out of PLA plastic, which is actually the weakest kind of 3D printed plastic um, that's commonly used. Uh, there's also ABS plastic and uh, PET G, P E T G plastic. ABS, uh, I wouldn't recommend using it because the fumes when you print it are pretty toxic. So PET G is the way to go. I just upgraded my 3D printer to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, hey, I'll I'll uh, at the end of this, hopefully I'll be showing you. Uh, getting things up and running on the 3D printer. I'll, I can actually show a live video feed in my 3D printer. I'll show you that once. Um, so here, here's my interface for my 3D printer. Um, it's off right now, but I'll hit this power button and turn it on. There we go. I'm going to move this to the side so that I'm not in the way here. Um, so that's my 3D printer. It's sitting right over there. And I can connect to it here. And then once it's connected, I can uh, upload a file to it and start a 3D print. Um, but now that it's connected, I can, I can move it. Yeah, you can see the 3D printing bed move. Um, I can make the head go over. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. It's fun to be able to just design something and just print it out. It takes a while. 
Uh, it can take, you know, depending on the print, it can take like an hour or it can take up to like days, depending on what you're 3D printing. So the smaller it is, um, it's, like some really small prints can take like a half hour, 45 minutes. But I think the longest print I've done is like two and a half days. Um, so it can get uh, really, you have to have patience. It's something you just kind of leave and then go to work. There are apps for remotely monitoring your 3D printer so that it, if it starts on fire, you'll know. So I'm going to turn that off for now. And we'll come back to that later. So what we need to focus on today is finishing this piece. And this is the holder for the charging pad. And I'll show you what we got to do. So that charging pad is this anchor charging pad. And it has a little USB port right there on the back. So we have to make a hole for that to go through. And also I kind of want a way to just snap this in there. My original thought was that this would just uh, glue into here. You would just take this and you know put some glue down here, whatever kind of glue you wanted and then press your charging pad in. But I figure people might want to take the charging pad out once in a while. So if I made it so that it could just snap in, I think that would be better than how I have it right now. But first things first, we're gonna make a hole for the USB port. And in order to do that, I have to figure out what the best plan of attack is for it to come out. It could just come straight out the bottom, but we'd have an issue for two reasons. One would be that it, it coming straight out is just not ergonomic. It's just going to be sticking out there and it could the cord would uh, kind of hit the bottom here and flex against there. Um, and two, it would look like a a cord is coming right into this dude's butt, which is kind of funny, I think, but uh, I don't really want to make the design that way. Um, so instead of doing that, I think the best place for this cable to come out is going to be... We are going to want it low, so I think we want it to go to one side. Either the left side or the right side. And in order to do that... All right, I'm going to open up just this part so we can work on that. Turn up my mic just a little bit. Yeah, bottom corner. But the issue with that is I have this piece right here. And that needs to be pretty much completely open for that charging pad to fit in there. So it would be dumb to come out up here. So what I'm actually going to do, I think, is refine this a little bit by just kind of making this arm just come straight up to here and that way we'd essentially be, be getting rid of this triangular section of plastic and I think that'll be fine there should be plenty of strength if these down here are strong enough then me taking out material right here is also going to be strong so I don't think there's going to be an issue there um, but I'm just going to have to redo that part of the design and so let's start on that. We got to step backwards through the design quite a ways here. And okay, so we got the foot. And now we got that. So I think what I need to refine is this sketch. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of match this. He's going to have like a little arm that comes out. And then that'll support it. Now, now it'll look like He'll look like an actual little guy. 
So that's going to be equal with that. And I think that's 10 millimeters. And I'm going to want this to be, well, we can play with some angles here. If we want some strength, it doesn't have to be completely straight. In fact, just to give it a little more strength, I think I'm going to go at a slight angle. I could actually just go straight into, yeah, I'm going to make this uh, line point at the center here. And I think that will work okay. I'm going to make this construction now. And then add a new line going from, oops, going from there to there. And we'll finish that sketch and I'll have to redo, oh no, okay. I think this will look better if I actually have that sweep down to here instead of stop right there. I think it'll look a little more natural. So I'm going to redo that again. So I'll delete that line. I actually have to delete both of those. So that's 10. And then I'll just have to make sure there's enough room for that cable to come out, and I think there will be. But I'll just have to measure that to be sure. So I'll make that line point at the center again. And then we'll see what we got. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. The angle of this is all kind of just personal preference. Let's just let's just roll with this and see. Oh yeah. That's better than going straight. Now he looks like he's a little buff. There we go. And he skipped leg day. Um now I have to make sure all these rounds still work. So far, so good. Nothing's breaking. When you go back through the feature tree and roll back features and change stuff, sometimes other work that you've done gets screwed up uh, because the new features you make depend on the old features you already did. Yeah, he's got a little chicken legs. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny, though. I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> um, okay, so here we got one that's screwed up. So it's just missing a radius completely. And I still have the old version open in here, so I can kind of, I think I can kind of just see what that might have been. Or maybe I can just open the previous uh, design. I'm going to open version 12. Oops, not the assembly. We're going to open the old version and see what that radius was and where to put it back the right way. I'll roll back here and it looks like that radius is that corner and those corners no longer exist. So I think I'll just delete that. And then we have that round there, that's good. And we have those rounds there. And I am going to update this because now we do need to account for this corner here. And this corner here. And we should also include that corner. And that corner. There we go. 
That looks pretty good. So stepping through this now, what was that one? The back. I think everything else will more or less work fine. Got our happy face and the screw holes. And we are good to go. So now there should be a space for that USB port to fit. And I'm just going to confirm that by measuring it. I'll just measure from that point to that point. And that is about 10 millimeters. And I'm going to take my caliper here. And we'll just see how wide this... i got to grab the charging cord, actually. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna grab the calipers here, and oh, we're cutting it close. This is exactly 10 millimeters, so I might want to take uh, his arm in a little more, even. Unless we want like a near exact fit, that might be kind of cool too. You know, I can cut it, I can probably cut into that radius and it'll be fine. So I am going to want that hole on either side, so I'm going to take away these radiuses for now. I'm going to take away these radiuses for now. And then we'll add those in later. Once we actually know what we're doing. Because without the radius in there, this length is now 12 millimeters, which is more than enough. It's more than what we need. I should be able to cut a hole in there for the USB port to go through. And if I plug in this cable that it came with, I just want to see how flat it is. And it is pretty much flat with the bottom here, I'll show you. So you can see it's like pretty much level with the bottom. So I have to make that cut in there go all the way to the bottom. In hindsight, I could have, well, yeah, I'm going to make that just a whole groove so that regardless of having it plugged in, you can just like set it in there. Even though I could make, I could just make like a little hole that goes right there and then leave this intact. But the issue with that is that uh, when I'm 3D printing it, we'll need uh, some support material there. But actually... That might not be a bad thing. I gotta think about this here. Well, the cord comes pretty close to the top anyway. So I think we're just gonna cut a little groove in there on both sides. So I'm going to start a new sketch right there. And I'm just going to draw a line straight out from the center. I do have to project this line.
And I'm going to just make a distance here. And because the cable is 10 millimeters wide, I'll give it a millimeter of clearance just so there's a little bit of play. And I do have to make a little arc there. Well, actually, yeah, I do. I'm going to redefine the sketch plane to be even with that and not the bottom there. There we go. So now I should be able to cut that all the way down and I'll just go to object there cut and we have our groove now that looks a little weird with a notch like that so I'm gonna put some rounds in there and there And that'll kind of match up with the USB port as well. So this guy, it would take maybe six and a half hours just to print this individual piece. Maybe a little less now that I took some material out. But yeah, it'd take about six and a half hours to print this guy. Let's see, where else do we want that? Yep, we want it there. We want it there. And we want to fill it there. Uh, maybe not there, actually. Yeah, I think it looks okay like that. Mm, do we want one there? I don't think we need one right there. That's one millimeter. That radius was... 0.75, so I should probably make it match that, make it 0.75 instead. Okay. And then I probably want I want to see I can probably get that fill it back on there again. And I don't think it'll cause an issue cuz I think it's Yeah, so that looks good. Cool. So I think we're done with the notch there. And now I just have to make sure it's on the other side as well. So I'm going to mirror that over by grabbing these two features. Mirror. Select the mirror plane right there. And then that should... nothing happened. Error. Okay. What needs to happen there? Let's try doing it without the fillets once and see what happens.
<laughs> yeah, he is smiling and everything. <laughs> yeah, um, I was making this dude, and then there was a viewer. It originally didn't look like a little dude, um, but it just kind of morphed into that form based on the way it had to hold the phone, and then someone was like, oh, it looks like a little dude. We should put a, like, a smiley face on him. So I just drew this, like... Half ha haphazard smiley face didn't even like to mention it just roughly did it and just slapped it in there and uh yeah it looks good it gives him some character <laughs> okay so that worked and i'm just gonna have to manually do that fillet but before i do yeah it was pretty funny. I'm just going to make that fillet on this side as well. Whoops, not that one. We got that one and that one. And I think that is good to go now and the USB port should be able to come out on either side I'm gonna save this and go back to our assembly here and update this part and yeah, honestly, that looks better. And now this angle looks like it's there just because of that slot anyway. So that turns out pretty good. Cool. I'm just going to double check some distances here. So from that line to that line, it is... Well, that should be enough clearance. It'll be a tight fit, but I think that should be fine. I might want to give it just a little more. Actually, looking at that now, I want it I want there to be just a little bit of play so that it doesn't get stuck. So instead of 11, it looks like we can probably go 11.5, and we'd still be okay. Yeah. Yep. Got that there. Now that's a little over 11. There, that should be good. All right. So one other thing I have to do to give this a little more strength is add a fillet inside here. See, I don't necessarily like how that looks. Well, that should be fine, actually. And we should be good with that, those rounds because uh, the charging pad itself has a little bit of a round on its edge. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I guess. We'll go 1.25 for that radius. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And then our last challenge is actually...
And I still don't know. I mean, we could just let people glue this thing in, and it'd be fine, but... The thing that I'm worried about is that they're gonna glue this charging pad in without... What they're gonna... I know this is gonna happen if I don't make just a snap-in feature. Uh, people are going to put the charging pad in there without having the cable attached and then the USB port is going to be blocked against like the top of it or something it's not going to be at the right orientation and then they're going to go oh shit I glued it in wrong um they're going to realize they can't plug it in after they glue it and that'll just piss them off so I need to make this I need to make this have a way where it just snaps in when you set it in there And I think all it's going to take is just a couple tabs. I don't think that'll be too tricky. So let's take a look at this a little more closely. I'll be right back. I'm going to turn off the heat in my apartment. It's getting hot in here. Right. So we got our charging pad. And I think I can just build some tabs that kind of come up at an angle and over here. And they don't have to be big. Just enough to kind of capture it in there. Yeah, dude, is it snowing where you're at already? Where are you at? Okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in uptown Minneapolis and it's I don't think it's snowing yet. I'm going to check the radar, actually. We're supposed to get 9 to 12 inches, so that's going to be fun. Luckily, I did get a parking spot behind my apartment. It kind of sucks because my apartment has four parking spots in the back that are uh, first come, first serve for the residents. And uh, there's 10 apartments and four parking spaces. So luckily, I like raced home after work and got one. Um, and if you don't do that... They're going to declare like a snow emergency for the city of Minneapolis and then they have special like parking rules. You can only park on like one side of the road or the other. And if you don't move your car, they will literally tow it away so that they can plow the road. And I found that out the hard way when I ended up, I, I legit ended up at the towing lot the day, the night of a snow emergency and there were just hundreds of just pissed off people trying to get their car back because everyone forgets so it was just a total shit show um they had like another like warming hut outside the towing office that people would just have to wait in um luckily i was able to kind of skip things because i figured out you could pay for it online pay the whatever it's expensive it was like 200 bucks at least um but went in there and got my car it was like negative 15 so they have like this van that drives you to your car and make sure your car starts so they don't just leave you in the lot frozen to death uh, at night. Um, so that was an adventure and I'm a lot more careful about that now. Who'd have guessed? Oh man, so it hit you already. I'm gonna check the radar. Let's see where this is at. I'm just gonna pull it up on mine here. NWS radar. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to look outside. <laughs> Hang on. I'll be, I'll be right back. I got to see uh, how bad it's snowing. Oh yeah, 
it is coming down out there right now. Which, uh, makes sense. Wow, well, we'll see if we get our 12 inches. Okay. So I think I'm going to build three tabs on, and the first one's going to be down here, the second one is going to be down here, and the third one is just going to be at the top right there. Uh, we get three tabs, and they should be able to just snap it in. So let's start working on that. So because of that, I think I'm going to suppress that radius, and that fucked everything up. <laughs> Alright, we're not going to suppress that radius. <laughs> That's what she said. Why did that mess everything up, though? Because <laughs> if I delete it, it deletes everything else of it. Oh. Alright, so that should be a lesson. Save fillets for last when you're designing a part. Uh, okay. <laughs> It'd be more realistic if it was like uh, two or three. What? <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new sketch right there. And we'll build our first tab. I'm just going to make some lines here. And the tabs don't have to be big. They don't have to be that big. That's five millimeters. I'm going to kind of just gauge it with my caliper here. Um, so five millimeters is like that much. I think they need to be... 10 millimeters. And then I think I'll just define it to an angle. Fifty degrees looks pretty good. Maybe fifty-two. The closer to this edge the better because the plastic is gonna flex when they put it in and try and snap it in. So I think see 51 degrees maybe now nah, we'll leave it at 52 okay we're gonna need a couple arcs here we'll go with the center point arc first arc is gonna go from there to there and the second arc is gonna go from there to there and we're just going to eyeball this at first. Um, I actually don't need that arc. I can just select this. Um, I have to decide. We'll just go four for now. And we'll extrude that down. And we're not going to cut, we're going to join. And I'm going to make this bigger than it needs to be. Uh, because we're going to do... 
something funky. Let's see. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. Yeah, yeah. So it's when you're when you're designing something in CAD, there's usually like two or three ways to do something, and that's just like the first thing that popped into my head that made sense for me. So that tab actually has to be pretty small. Um, I think probably only three, maybe two and a half. We have a tab. And now we need to kind of shape this a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can get by just by using fillets. And that might work. No, I think I'm actually going to need a chamfer for the bottom one. A chamfer is flat, a fillet is round. So... I'm going to do that, but I'm going to go, right now it's at equal distance. Yeah, I did actually. I went to school for mechanical engineering, and then I kind of, I, I did that for a couple years. I worked for a company called Graco that made paint sprayers, pumps, fluid handling systems, things like that. Um, and then that got a little too uh, boring for me. It wasn't creative enough for me. I got sick of the grind and wanted to do something more creative. So now I, my job title is creative technologist and I work with virtual reality and interactive technology and uh, kind of develop VR games for usually for marketing purposes for companies and things like that and interactive installations. I still put my mechanical engineering to use sometimes but uh, in, in more creative ways now than before uh, which I love. But yeah, so because I have a mechanical engineering background um, I still like to do this stuff sometimes, and this is like something I've been wanting to make for myself for a while, so I figured, why not stream the whole design process, that way people can see how I approach an engineering problem and actually just create something that uh, I thought of as an idea. And I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this one, just figuring out what works as I go, which works most of the time. So once this is done, I'm just going to release all the files for anyone who wants to to 3D print their own so that they can just make one. So instead of equal distance, we're going to go two distances. So because I want that one to pretty much... Yeah, I kind of want it to look like that. And let's see, we got there one millimeter. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. We're gonna round this stuff off too. So we're gonna round that. We'll go four for that. And let's see what we can do for that one. Just because it needs a little bit of strength, so. Mm, 0.5 maybe? And then we gotta round this off. Do that one. Yeah, it is actually. Because um, then it takes like another seven or eight hours to print another one. Uh, yeah, you're definitely right. Um, but that happens pretty often, so. Well, it doesn't happen often, but it's like not something you don't expect to happen. And usually it's just a flaw in the way you design the part. 
Um, I'm going to go back here. I think this angle is too steep. The minimum distance from there to there is three millimeters. And I think it doesn't even need to be that much, so... We can probably back off on this a little bit, and it'll make it easier to design. And actually, I shouldn't have dimensioned it to there. I need to project this dimension. Oops. And then I need to create a dimension. First, I need to create a point at this intersection. And then I dimension from there to there. It's 3.25. Uh, we're just going to go 2. Because we just need a little bit of a lip there. And that's looking a lot better. And now we'll do a... Okay. I think I know what I want to do now. I'm going to make an axis through the well, I don't think I need to do that cuz we have an axis at the origin. So I can use this axis. Okay. Hey, what up Galaxy Cat? How's it going? Glad you could join. We are working on a phone charging stand. I'm going to redo this completely. Well, not completely, but it's going to be easier for me to design it if I make the first tab up here. And then I can copy it to here and here. Because it's at a weird angle right now. I want to do some things where I kind of cut into it, but it's going to make it a little tricky if it's down here. It's going to work a lot better if it's straight up. So, yeah, I'm doing good. My Tuesday's going good. Staying cozy. We've got a big snowstorm in Minneapolis where I'm at. So, how's your Tuesday going? So it shouldn't be hard for me to fix this, actually. Because I can just take this and go whoop. And then I'll just make another line that hits this at the midpoint. And I'll make that construction line. And I'll make it vertical. And now our tab's up here. Cool. Good, glad to hear that. So now that we have our little tab up here, we're gonna kinda cut into it, I think. By making like a little radius. In order to do that, we're gonna make a new sketch. And I might have to figure out how to do a section view. Because I can't see that from here. Either way, that is kind of tricky to actually do. Hmm. Well, let's just do what I was doing before and then figure out if this works or not once it fits up in the model. 
I might not have to overcomplicate it like I'm trying to do in my head. We'll chamfer that in. Uh, why isn't that chamfering? Oh, it's because I'm in a sketch. Okay. So we'll get rid of that sketch. We'll do a chamfer. And I am using a program called Fusion 360. And this is a CAD program, computer aided design program. It's used for engineering. And it's pretty slick. Pretty powerful. And it's actually free uh, if you get a startup license. If you're making under $100,000 and using the software, um, they give it to you for free. So there we go. That's lining up nicely. And then that overhang is at a 45 degree angle, so the 3D printer shouldn't have to print any support material underneath it. So I like the looks of that. And let's add some fillets onto there. Hang on a second. Before I do that, what is that distance? That is half a millimeter. So I should be able to round this out by going 0.25. Uh, maybe we can go a little more. Yeah, ask me anything you want to know. I think we're just going to settle up 0.3 there. That looks good. And we'll give this just a slight radius there. Just so it has a little bit of extra strength. Cool, so that tab looks good. I'm going to save this and go back into our assembly and actually just see how it looks. And we'll see if it's colliding with anything. And I think that will be good, actually. So that should capture that in there pretty good. Now I did roughly model uh, this charging stand, so... So that doesn't match up perfectly with the real world one that I have. You can kind of see this, the curvature of this radius. Not quite the same. But it's close and I think it'll be good enough. So we're going to roll with this. And now I just need to copy that down to the corners there. So I'll grab all those features. And I will do a circular pattern. And I'll select this center as the axis. That looks really messed up. I don't think it'll be messed up when we actually do it though and it's already at an even yeah I did go to college I actually went to school for mechanical engineering I was just telling uh, uh, that one friggin guy my story um, I went to school for mechanical engineering and did that for a couple of years once I graduated and then I kind of discovered that it was a little too boring for me. There wasn't enough creativity in it for me. 
Um, and that's just for me. Like mechanical engineering is a great career for a lot of people and a lot of people absolutely love doing it. But for me, um, I'm kind of an artistic guy and it just wasn't creative enough. So I diverted from mechanical engineering into, uh, and I pursued my interest in game development, which led me to a creative technologist position working with virtual reality and interactive technology. So I develop virtual reality games, uh, mostly for companies for marketing and advertising purposes. And I do still use mechanical engineering to create mechanical uh, art artistic installations, you know, kind of like art that moves and things like that. So that is my story. I think I'm just going to do one here, and then I'm going to do it at a custom angle. And let's see, where does we need to go? So 120 would be, let's see, 125, 23. I want it pretty close to the, I think that looks good. Maybe a little, little more. Yeah, thanks. It is a lot of fun, and I really enjoy my job now. It's a job that I actually look forward to going to, and it doesn't feel like work, which I feel like is very rare. So 124 degrees looks good, and then we'll do that just one more time, but the other direction. And then this time we'll go negative 124, and then it should pop up over there. Cool, so we got our tabs. That looks pretty good. I don't want to say we're done, because I feel like whenever I say that, I find something that I want to improve. Um, but we're, we might be done. Because you see now how that holds that in place. And now I think the only way to actually test whether this all works is to just print it out and try and fit everything up and just see if everything works okay. So now I'm going to just... Uh... I'm going to see if I can rotate that so that the charger, the USB port... Where are you? Oh, okay, hang on. Oops. Well, for some reason, moving that's not working. Um, I should probably fix this before moving forward, because I do see that it has some issues here. We'll go to that one first. And the first profile is... Oh, that probably would explain it. Okay, so that's, that was missing this reference, because we did some work on there added some fillets so it didn't have the same reference to that face as it had before. So that'll fix that part. And then it looks like it lost its other reference for... Oh. Hmm. Bear with me here. Okay. Yep, and then that one was referenced to this face, so we got to redo that as well. That should fix that.
then for whatever reason, yeah. Yeah, 3D printing can take anywhere from, it can take anywhere from, if it's something really small, like maybe like this big, it could take like an hour, 45 minutes, maybe, maybe even a half hour. Uh, but if it is something big, it can take days to 3D print. My longest 3D print that I've done so far was two and a half days. So it really depends on what you're printing. But yes, it's a very slow process and it's usually something that you leave and forget. Um, it's usually something that you just start it and just let it run overnight or you go to work. Uh, I have actually have an app on my phone that I use to monitor the 3D print while I'm at work. I have like a live video feed. And if I see something go wrong or if I see that the 3D print failed, I can stop the 3D print. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a good way to just leave it and check on it. So for whatever reason, this came apart from there. I may need to check that out. Oh, it's because it's a rigid one. For this one, I think that this piece will take six and a half hours. Uh, this piece and this hinge together. So I 3D printed these last night. I designed this on the stream last night and then 3D printed it. Uh, these two pieces together took, I think, like five and a half hours to print. Which isn't too bad. I just start it and go to bed and then it's done when I wake up. So I'm going to roll this way back and redo this. I'm going to just get rid of that. And we'll make that planer. And that way. All right, I'm not happy with that. So we're just going to get rid of that. And why won't that move? Okay, anyway, we'll grab that, and we'll go cylindrical, and do that, okay. And then we'll grab, do a planer joint, and we'll do that surface. And bring it to this surface. And then boom. Now I just need to line up the USB port. I am making this for everyone. So originally I wanted to make this for myself because it's something that I want. It's a little phone charging stand that you just set your phone on and it kind of pivots. Uh, but I figured it'd be fun to make this on stream, and then when I'm done, I'll release the design to the world. I'll release the drawings, the 3D files, uh, a list of all the parts you need to assemble it. It's just a few screws and things like that. Uh, but that way, anyone who has a 3D printer can uh, print off their own and have that. All they got to do is buy the charging pad, uh, the metal hardware, the screws, and 3D print everything. For some reason, this doesn't like to rotate. I'm not sure why that is. Whatever, that's not important. We know it'll work.
Cool. So now these tabs should hold it in place so that it won't come out. You can just pop it in. You should be able to just like place this part in there and then just kind of flex it in. And yeah, I think that'll work fine. Just for a specific one, and I'll show you the specific charging pad that is going to work with this thing. So anchor charging pad. It is, I believe it's this one. I'm just making sure there isn't another one that uh, looks similar, but yeah, it's this one. So it's only 10 bucks, so super cheap. This one right here. And yeah, so people can just order that and order the screws, and I'll have a whole parts list, but yeah, it's designed specifically for this one. And I th <clears throat> think we might be done. I think we might be done. I think we might be ready to 3D print this thing. I do not have any pets actually because my apartment is not pet friendly and even if it was pet friendly you know I would actually love to have a dog but I'm at a point in my life where I'm way too busy and I'm always on the go and it wouldn't be fair to an animal if I got one because I wouldn't be able to spend enough time taking care of it um, so once the time is right once I'm a little settled down and have a little more time um, I'm definitely going to get a dog of some kind. I don't know. Should I get a, a big dog or a little dog? I kind of want to get a, a Newfoundland. Those things are just massive. But we used to have uh, uh, one of my roommates um, in college had some Newfoundlands in our house. And they lived with us for a couple months. And it was a lot of fun. They're like big teddy bears. They're like 180 pound teddy bears. And they do nothing but love you and slobber all over you. So they are a little messy, but it could be fun to have a big dog. I think I'm done with this. So the, <laughs> the only other thing that we need... And you're going to laugh, but I think we need to find a happy face sticker... Because once the charging pad is there, is in there, you're not going to see this dude's happy face. So we need to get a little happy face sticker to put on here so that it's a little charging dude when you're not using him. So my opinion on cats, I also like cats, but not all cats because uh, some cats are really mean, but... I love a cat when it's nice. One inch happy face sticker. Let's see. How many inches across is this? This charging pad is, let's see, we'd want the sticker, it can be up to three inches. So let's look for a three inch happy face sticker. And yes, I am gonna officially put it in the <laughs> parts list when I release the design. So we got two inch. That one might work.
Three inch LED happy emoji stickers. What the heck? We're not going to use this, but I'm very curious. <laughs> what? You press it and it lights up? That's cool. That wouldn't help our stand charge, though. A uh, two inch sticker might be enough. Let's see here. Let's see, do they have two and a half inch? I will be streaming until I start 3D printing this part. So I'll probably be streaming for a little while longer. We'll see. This might work. Bumper sticker, vinyl. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Go take care of your kiddo. Hope she feels better. That's too bad. I hope she feels better, man. But yeah, completely understandable. Do what you gotta do. So we might go with a two inch sticker because you only get one with the three inches. And that way you can have extra stickers because you get a whole roll of them. Oh yeah. That'll work. Cool, so we're just going to stick that happy face sticker right onto here when it's done, and then it'll be a phone charging holder guy. Cool. Yeah, I'm just looking for the smiley face, because uh, originally when I started making this, it wasn't going to look like a person, um, but it just kind of naturally ended up that way, because I made these hooks. I made these hooks in a way that it holds your phone sideways. And it also holds your phone vertically. So these hooks are here for a functional purpose. But with the shape of the hooks, uh, this looked like he has little legs and feet. And this looks like arms. And this looks like his face. So when I was making this, someone suggested it looks like a person. And we should put a little smiley face on it. So, yeah, we ended up doing that. And, yeah, that's why it's fun streaming. Because, uh... Sometimes you guys help me out with my design and give me creative suggestions, and I love taking that into account and actually doing it. So yeah, because his face is going to be covered up once you actually print him out, so we need a sticker to put there so he actually has a little happy face when he's done. Maybe we'll go with that 3 inch, though. Well, I'll get both of them and I'll see what works best. And then I will put whatever sticker I like best on the parts list. Cool. Well, I think, I think we're done. Awesome. I'm really happy with how this turned out. 
So you just have this thing that you can set it to whatever angle you want and tighten it down. So yeah, before I 3D print this out, I'm just going to do a little recap of uh, what this thing is. So this is a wireless phone charging stand that holds your phone either in a vertical or horizontal orientation. And you can adjust it to whatever height you want. If you have it on your desk, it can face up at you a little more. Or if you have it on your nightstand, maybe you want it uh, almost vertical. And you can adjust that by uh, untightening this little thumb screw here and tightening that in. This is just held in by a carriage bolt and this hinge was inspired by the GoPro hinge mount design. And yeah, you, there are three pieces that you need to 3D print. There's the main base here, and there's the stand right there, and the hinge. I guess I shouldn't call this a, a base. This is the phone holder and the charger holder. But yeah, this looks pretty good, and we should be able to get this going on the 3D printer soon. Yeah, exactly. It'd be good for streaming, too, because you could actually use your phone to stream, and it would simultaneously charge your phone while you're streaming so you would never run out of battery. Awesome. All right, let's get this thing printed. So I'm gonna show you how we 3D print something. So the only thing left for me to 3D print is just this dude. Uh, because last night I 3D printed, I already 3D printed the hinge and the stand so we already got we've already got these parts done they came out super nice i'm really happy with how they printed and this this fit up is just perfect i love it um and once the bolts arrive i can assemble this all together they're not here yet they'll probably get here tomorrow if uh the snowstorm doesn't cause any delays so now we just need to 3d print this dude. So we'll grab this guy and we will convert him to a format that we can 3D print. So that looks good. And we'll save this. Phone charging stand. Charger base V18. And now we'll open up our 3D printing utility. When will I be streaming? Well, I don't really have a set schedule. So it's really random for me. So this is our band's Twitch account. So Jason the Bassist streams gaming quite often. He plays Apex Legends and uh, World of Warcraft and other fun stuff. And he does that pretty often. Uh, my streaming schedule is pretty inconsistent. Uh, when I do stream, I like to stream virtual reality uh, because I have a whole virtual reality set up in my living room and a camera and a webcam in there for streaming. And I really enjoy doing that. Let's see. Your uh, must still be opening. We'll wait for that to open up. Oh, and if you haven't before, check out our band's new EP, All Rise. That is what my background here is. So you can see that on Spotify, iTunes, well, Apple Music now, I guess. Uh, Amazon, Google Play, if that's a still a thing. And we have all our music on uh, YouTube as well, if you want to check that out. So here we have our 3D printing utility. And I'm going to bring in our model. Just need to find it here. 
Charger base. There we go. Yeah, thanks. That album cover I actually designed myself. I took a stock image that we found that we really liked of this uh, person looking over uh, this ocean. Uh, this was actually taken in England. And I 3D modeled all these rocks text. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the sky and stuff is moving. I actually animated this whole background and made it into a looping video. The water is shimmering. Uh, the grass is kind of waving. And yeah, I kind of animated our album cover here. The rocks kind of like shoot up and down. Uh, that was a fun little project. But as far as horror VR, I don't hate it. But I haven't done that for a while. My favorite kind of VR games are... I like VR chat because that's kind of like a, a social game. You go in and people make worlds and stuff. And you literally never know what's going to happen. I've seen the craziest stuff in there. Um, I like shooter games. There's One of my favorites is Pavlov VR. It's kind of like Counter-Strike, except in VR. Another cool one is Wave, which is... Basically, you go to concerts, you go to live concerts with people in VR. The DJs are actually DJing electronic music in virtual reality. It's so cool. And they, they have like a full body tracking suit on in real life. And you can literally see them doing their thing DJing. It's wild. Makes me excited for the future as a VR developer. Alright, so now we got to prepare this thing. And we're going to print him on his back. And we're going to need some support material. So I'm going to just put this on the right side of my screen here so you can see what I'm doing and I'm not covering the webcam up too much. So 3D printers print stuff up layer by layer. And it needs support material because the way it is right now, it would be printing into thin air when it gets to this point. So we need to add some support material. So I'll just go down to that. Generate support. And then that'll re recalculate this. So it's just processing all the layers that the 3D printer builds up. Because it, it builds this up slowly, layer by layer by squirting plastic out of a nozzle. Okay. That looks okay. Now, I don't think we need supports here or here. So I'm going to raise the overhang angle to 50 degrees instead of 45. And then that should make this go away. And it should make that go away. So what it's what I did by changing that is it says I didn't quite make it go away. I'll have to do it a little more. Um, so 3D printers can only print a certain amount of overhang before the plastic material just kind of drops off into thin air. And usually you can get that. I mean, if you push it, you can actually get that pretty steep, maybe uh, 70 degrees. It depends on your 3D printer. It depends on the material. Depends on your settings. But the, the rule of thumb, the default is 45 degrees degree angle. Anything steeper than 45 degrees needs support under it. But I think we can get away with less than that. We'll go, we'll see what we can do here. We'll go 55. And yeah, when I took it up to 50, that got rid of the support there. But there's still a little here that we don't need. So it's slicing right now. Cool. So that looks good to me. And what I like to do before I start any 3D print for the first time is step through each layer individually. So in order to do that, 
I'm just going to position it right here. And we'll see how the 3D printer is going to make this thing. So this is layer one. So what it's doing here is this is the actual part that it can print right away. And it's just going to build that up slowly. Okay, so it'll just start building that up. And it's doing a little bit of support infill material there. Uh, just because it's thick enough to where it can do that. And then it'll start building up the inside. Now the inside's done and it's working on this outer rim. Building that up. And all the while it's doing this, it, this is support structure for the legs and arms because it needs that underneath it so that it doesn't print into thin air once it gets to that point. So it's going up and there is the first layer for the leg, legs and arms. And how the support works is that it just needs this little grid structure because when it 3D prints on here, it'll just kind of sit on there like a board, basically. Uh, the structure underneath it is enough to where it can draw a st straight line and when the plastic hardens it will stay level and it won't drop off into thin air. So it's building the arms up. We've got a little bit of infill there. Which should be fine. Cool. I think this is ready to 3D print. The only thing that looks weird to me is that. A project gone wrong. Well. I've had some stuff at work during my job where I designed something and it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, but that's... That was like designing parts for like paint sprayers and things like that. And typically like it's not really gone wrong. You just figure out you can't do it that way and you try something else. Uh, you kind of rethink how you're doing your design, how you're approaching the problem. And maybe that issue isn't making a new part. Maybe it's designing, maybe it's redesigning a, a part that exists or upgrading that to work a certain way. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I haven't really had like a huge failure I guess it kind of like okay the the reason I say that is engineering is all about failing like you're gonna make usually you're gonna make several designs that don't work exactly the way you want them to right away like for example once I get this all printed out I might try and fit up the bolts and figure out that I need to adjust some of the hole sizes a little bit so I'll get to that point and I'll 3D print another one and everything will fit up. But sometimes I get lucky and everything fits up perfect the first time. So let's hope that happens. So I think this might, this ugly notch might be due to coasting. Let's see what that does. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. A good book that I have read. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, my favorite book lately is a book called Neuromancer. And I will show you. It is a novel about virtual reality. Um, let me show you the... Actually, let me show you the album cover, or the book cover. But before I do, I'll just explain it to you. It's a book set in the future. It's kind of a cyberpunk dystopian future where 
you can put on a helmet and be in a simulation. And it, it is kind of what inspired the movie The Matrix, uh, where humankind can put on basically a VR helmet that plugs them into the internet directly. And, like, files and servers and, and virtual data and stuff, you actually physically see it and experience it. And it, the book kind of follows uh, cybercrime and things like that. And it's about artificial intelligence uh, gaining, I, I mean, basically becoming a sentient being. And it's kind of a hard book to explain. The plot is a little confusing, but it is an excellent novel. Um, let me show you the cover. Yeah, so it's this. That's a really small image. So there's the there's the cover of the book, and uh, yeah, kind of like Ralph breaks the internet, except hardcore, and a very very R rated, uh, in the sense that it's kind of violent, and there's like death and stuff that happens in it. Um, it's kind of like a gritty dystopian cyberpunk future. Uh, it's really cool. I actually enjoyed the book so much that I had the album cover printed, and I'm gonna hang it on the wall here. I'll show you that actually. So, this is my favorite book lately. So I actually had this album cover printed, and I'm gonna, probably going to find a spot to hang this up at work or something, because it's kind of cool. Um, kind of ties into what I do with virtual reality and the things that I like. So, highly recommend this book. Uh, it takes a while to get through. There is an audiobook of it as well, if that's more your style. And I found the book because... I think I was watching a uh, like a speech by like a game development talk on YouTube or something and someone recommended the book and I just kind of looked it up and I'm like okay cool this is kind of a cool concept and I read it and it kind of was was mind-blowing and this was written in I think it was written in 1984 let me check really quick Let me check when it was written. Yeah, 1984. It was written in 1984, like before virtual reality was even a popular thing, before computers were even really well known, before the internet was well known. And it got so many things right that are, that like exist today. It's like really wild. And it's making predictions about like uh, uh, artificial intelligence and things like that. And it's really interesting and a, and a relevant book today, so highly recommend that one. So back to this guy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Audiobooks are easier sometimes for that reason. You can just uh, put it on when you're doing something else, when you're driving or doing schoolwork or whatever you're up to. Cool. This looks pretty good. Um, I'm just going to go over my settings here and double check all this stuff. There's a lot of settings when you're 3D printing, but most of these you don't have to pay attention to. I just have it set to uh, like advanced mode so that I can see all the settings. And I'm just gonna kind of gloss over everything and make sure everything is correct. It, right now it's saying it's gonna take five hours and 48 minutes to print. And I'm using an infill density of 20%, which I think is going to be just fine. 
because my wall line count is set to four, that means the wall thickness is going to be pretty strong. And that'll also, if there's a little bit of uh, empty space on the inside, that'll allow it to flex a little bit too. Printing temperature, 200 degrees, 50 degrees. Um, I'm going to preheat my 3D printer while I'm setting this up. So I'll turn the 3D printer on. And I'll connect to it. And we'll see once the temperatures pop up here. I'll preheat the bed. That usually takes a while to heat up. So, yeah, absolutely. Glad you could stop by. It's fun to have people who ask questions. So when you're 3D printing something, there are two elements that get heated up. The first one is the nozzle, which is right there. I'll just zoom in on this a little bit. So the nozzle is right there. That's what heats up and squirts out a little line of plastic. And then the other thing is this, what's called a bed. And this is basically the build platform. And that needs to be heated up as well so that when the first layer of plastic goes down, it, it st actually sticks there. And also so that when it cools, it doesn't curl upwards. So the bed is heated, it keeps that plastic down uh, because if the plastic at the bottom is cold and the plastic above it is hot, that it, there will be a difference in uh, kind of expansion and contraction and that will cause the corners to kind of peel up. So that's why the bed needs to heat up on a 3D printer. And that takes a little while so I'm just starting that right now. It's at 37 degrees, 38. Room temperature is like 25 degrees. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you, I appreciate that. I like doing these kind of streams. I like explaining things in a way that anyone can understand, even if you haven't 3D printed anything or design any kind of part or anything like that. So you don't have to be an expert to understand it. Okay, I think we are good to go on this thing. So I'm going to save this. I'm just going to take it off to my second screen when I save it here. So bear with me here. So saving that out. And that's saving the project. Now what we're going to do is save uh, the G-code. And G-code is a file format that's basically a set of machine positions and instructions. It tells the 3D printer where to go and when to squirt out the plastic. And it's kind of just a raw text file. So I'll save out this G code. And I can actually open that because all G code is is a text file. Um, so I'll open up that G code and kind of show you what's under the hood when something gets 3D printed. So this is what G-code looks like. All it is is text. So these are comments. Anything with a semicolon is ignored. This is just information in the G-code. These codes are instructions for the machine. M is a machine code. Uh, G92 is the code for reset extruder. Um, and then these are all, okay, layer count, 
There's going to be 157 layers in our print. And G0 is telling it, I think that is setting the speed. And then G1 is telling it, these are the actual positions. And then the, pretty much the rest of the whole file looks like this. Um, yep. So it's just kind of telling you what it's doing here. So yeah, basically a 3D printer is reading all these lines of text and then following all these instructions over the six hours or whatever that it's gonna be 3D printing. So cool. So we just went through our whole G code. It is 245,263 lines of text. And that's what the 3D printer reads in order to 3D print something. So this got converted into a set of positions that squirt out the plastic. It's kind of cool. Having trouble finding a career. Well, a lot of people do, but that's no reason to worry. Everyone will find their way. What are the things that make you happy in life? What do you enjoy doing? So now I'm going to actually upload this 3D print file. So we got our charger base and yeah, art, I mean there are, there are plenty of careers you can put art to use. Um, some of them might not be as creative as you like. A lot of artists go into you know, graphic design, making stuff for companies and things like that. Uh, you could do 3D modeling. That, that is a form of art. You could do 3D art for video games. Uh, where I work, we have 3D artists who 3D model you know, objects, characters. They rig them up and animate them. Uh, I think that's a really cool career, actually. If I had more time, I'd do that. But I do mostly game programming. Uh, but I can 3D model stuff too, if I really need to. Um, if you like drawing, you can actually make 2D art for games, for 2D games. And so I think that's pretty cool. Okay. So I am going to load the file. And hit print. And now it is going to warm up the tool. The nozzle and while it's doing that I'm actually gonna clean off the build plate and I'll put my uh, webcam here so you can actually see what I'm doing so I'm gonna go over to my 3d printer and clean off the build plate that way it will stick that way the first layer will stick down really nicely So I'm just using 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean off the build plate. All right, so that should be good to go. It should start soon. <laughs> Banana. Banana. So we're almost there. It's at 200 now, so it will start moving in just a second. There it goes. Now I am going to hop over there and just kind of observe the first layer going down. Sometimes I need to make adjustments to the height of the bed as it prints its first layer, just so the first layer goes down nicely. So I'm going to go over there and 
Watch over that now. Good. All right, so I think the first layer is going down okay. I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on it for a little bit. And once I know that everything is going well, we might end the stream there. So I will be right back. I'm going to go take just a short break here. And then when I get back, we'll see how the first layer is going down. Be right back.
All right, we're back, and the first layer is going down super well. So I am going to crack open a beer, and I think we are done with this design. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I might do one more stream for the fit-up and uh, kind of the finalization of the design. Uh, but most of the design work is done. Uh, now we just need to tweak it once we actually fit up all the parts because you can design something that you think is perfect on the computer but once you actually go to fit it up you'll probably find out you didn't get your tolerances quite right the first time. I might get lucky and everything might fit up okay uh, but there's a chance that I won't so I'm going to do another stream to f actually just fit up the parts for the first time and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so I'm going to end it for now. Thank you all who stopped by and watched today, and I will see you guys later. Bye!